Got to start with Credit Suisse and the view back, I'm going to say 15 years or so, before the great financial crisis of 2006. And it has been an abject value trap and an abject failure. You've been directly involved in this. You have been patient. David Harrell, have you run out of patience with the gnomes of failure in Zurich? Well, not at this stage yet, because there has been wholesale changes at the bank from the board to the management down. And I think we need to see what the new people who are involved with the bank, both from the executive management committee and the board of directors, can do to mm -hmm. turn this around. There is inherent value within the business. And I think these people should be given a chance to try to create this value and sustain this value. Uh, the bank trades at about a third or 40 percent of book value. Right. So the, the object now should be stabilization and then growth after stabilization. And if, you right. know, if they can't do it, someone else has to. Do they have a Swiss put? Are they not making tough decisions because they know this government has their back, that Zurich will be UBS and that Zurich will be Credit Suisse? I would hope not, by the way. I'm, I'm a believer in free market capitalism, and there, there shouldn't be any protection. If they can't do it and someone comes in to make an acquisition to, to all or parts of the business, I think that should be allowed to happen. Now, there's talk that if someone does bid, they will give UBS a chance to uh, do some kind of a deal combination. But I would certainly hope that is not the case. Is Europe even ready for big cross-border uh, bank m and I don't think you can have cross-border bank m and in uh, Europe on a wide scale until some of the rules and laws are changed. At some point, this may happen, but you still have fragmented banking markets, which it makes it non-conducive to cross-border. I think there is a possibility for some on isolated on an isolated levels and basis but at this stage you still need regulatory evening out that would make it more conducive to cross border M&A on the other hand a company like Credit Suisse has a huge private wealth management business which is now bigger than their global markets investment banking business and for any big global bank that wants exposure in this lucrative area you would think Credit Suisse would be an attractive asset. I got to ask you about um, China because every morning it seems like futures lately have, are driven by the idea that China may um, get a little bit lighter on tech companies. Yesterday there was a report that Ant could uh, revive its IPO, although that's been kind of poo pooed. I see that you own a stake in Prosys, which in turn owns a stake in Tencent, right? What's your view on China tech? Yeah, it does appear that we've hit peak regulatory initiatives in China. As you know, over the last year or so, they've been increasing a regulatory scrutiny on the Chinese tech sector. So <clears throat> the whole sector has been kind of hit. Uh, we also own some Alibaba as well, and both these uh, sectors have been hit. But we believe that even with this additional regulatory scrutiny, now keep in mind what's happened is these businesses around the globe have grown much faster than the regulators' ability around the globe to regulate them. And China's kind of taken a first stab. But what we have seen, what appears to be statements from the government that were getting, getting to the end of the regulatory initiatives, and then you even saw in the case of Tencent, uh, uh, lots of games that were approved this week. This is one of the things that they were concerned about, uh, withholding game approvals, uh, you know, for the various reasons. So we are starting to see regulatory relief or at least uh, movements by the government that the worst is behind the sector. Right. And meanwhile, these are really well-run, uh, world-class tech right. companies that trade at low double-digit multiples. 